Welcome everyone to another episode of Two Geeks and a Marketing Podcast. And this is a special Christmas 2023 episode. We are back for more news, tech, content, wisdom from the world of marketing. And as always, my co-host is a digital marketing veteran. He's a speaker, trainer, and advisor with nearly three decades of experience. He enjoys revealing visual storytelling techniques to help you build better online campaigns faster. Please welcome Monsieur Pascal Fintoni. Well, thank you very much for the introduction. You've just heard from my co-host, a marketing speaker and consultant who spent his whole career helping his customers get their marketing simple but effective. He's the author of Cat's Matter Marketing Plans and the creator of the Rock Dog video series. I give you Monsieur Roger Edwards. Oh, Pascal, it's nearly Christmas. Happy Christmas. Well, thank you very much. It <laughs> feels like it's been sneaking upon us because we've been so busy. And it's weird this year because Christmas and New Year is bang on over a weekend. It doesn't break the week like it used to uh, in previous years. I mean, you've come back from a rather eventful um, trade event in in London, bless you, in fighting against you know transport issues, <laughs> weather conditions, and more. So thank you very much for taking the time to record this special uh, episode. No, you're absolutely right. I think Christmas really snuck up on us this year, and, and it does feel as if December is a lot shorter because of the way Christmas is positioned. But Pascal, what a year we have had on Two Geeks and a marketing podcast. I mean, it began with episode 92 back in January. And that was the one about emojis in marketing podcast mixtapes. And we talked about Mission Impossible Dead, Re Dead Reckoning Part 1. And isn't it a shame that they've delayed uh, Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 2 for a whole year? I can't believe that. And, of course, our latest episode just a few weeks ago was the one about the Amsterdam International Documentary Film Festival and the big marketing meetup in Belfast conference which we talked about so my goodness pascal that is over 140 marketing news items over 35 content spotlights 70 marketing tech and apps <laughs> 70 plus historical events and anniversaries and an additional 17 film marketing campaigns reviewed and let's not forget one of the highlights of the year was episode 100 with my sister talent manager kate edwards what a year oh listen i literally got a you know, ghost pimple when you said all that because those numbers are staggering <laughs> and, and and back to viewers and listeners who are thinking wow how did you do it well a form of denial, because if you were to say, you know, in the future, I'd be recording so many episodes and I'd be reviewing, for example, more than 70 marketing tech and apps, that would be quite a scary prospect. But what you do is you, um, you know, take advantage of your passion, you take advantage of a mission, which is this podcast, this idea of if you're a full time marketer, or even if marketing has been added to your very, very busy role, we're here for inspiration, we're here to make you feel less lonely, we're here to give you some ideas and suggestions from across sectors including the world of entertainment, which is why we we are very keen to always end the, the recording of the episode with a film marketing review. Yeah, and we, I mean, the world of marketing is so diverse and so packed with stuff happening. You know, we never run out of stuff to talk about. I mean, you might think, well, maybe we're going to have a bit of a, a dry week this week. There's not much news. But every single time, there is always lots to talk about from all the different sources which we gather our information and from our, our friends around the world. There is tech, there's films, there's exhibitions, there's conferences, there's articles, there's videos, there's podcasts. It's, it's absolutely saturated out there. But we do manage to home in on some really good stuff don't we we do and on that very point we've had on i think on two occasions have i had to create a bonus episode around yeah. ai who has been a source of much you know exaggeration much false promises and you and i've taken almost you know a, a bit of a mission on being the voice of reason saying it's a great support it's a great way to assist you in developing your strategies and your content and so on because only assist and and i saw um, a LinkedIn post from a great pal uh, here in the northeast of England, Simon Clayton, saying, Chat GPT is not your marketing department. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. Although I have come to appreciate 
chat GPT, I guess. Um, but we'll come to that later because there's a specific uh, content spotlight, I think, leads me into what I wanted to say there. So, Pascal, what we're going to do today is we're going to go through our normal sequence of um, segments. So we're going to have it in the news. We're going to do marketing tech and apps and content spotlights, etc. But we are going to home in on our top three items in each section that we've talked about over the course of the year. And then we're going to do a bit of a crafty vote, aren't we, and decide which is the best in the news item, which is the best content spotlight, et cetera, et cetera. Does that sound like a plan? Sounds like a plan. I have to say it was sheer agony to, talk, to choose <laughs> only three uh, news items and more from you know a year of activities. But we got there, and I can't wait to hear your selection. I'm sure that you'll be surprised by mine on occasion. So let's begin Roger Edwards with In The News. In The News. All right, Pascal, In The News, hit me with your top three. And I think you've got an honourable mention as well. I do. We'll just begin with AI and machine learning. We'll dominate and move faster within sales and customer service rather than marketing from auto translation to automated FAQs and virtual assistants, according to Google. Next, on Monday 24th of July 2023, the police stopped work to remove the old Twitter sign at the newly named ex-company San Francisco headquarters as it failed to communicate with security and the building owners its plan to take out the signage. Hotels.com has hired British film director Edward Wright to direct its series of TV adverts promoting their new mobile app to the tune of the Human League's Don't You Want Me? And an extra mention to HSBC, short form video ad on Facebook sharing financial advice is among the top 25% of ads when it comes to effectiveness as judged by the public thanks to its TikTok-like vertical video and a POV style. Over to you, Roger. Netflix outperforms subscriber expectations as CEO announces departure. Netflix added more than 7 million subscribers in its fourth quarter as its content slate outperformed expectations in the last months of 2022. Toblerone has been ordered by the Swiss authorities to remove the image of the Matterhorn mountain peak from its packaging after, after some of the chocolate bars production is moved outside of Switzerland. Next, inspired by a Snapchat post, Heinz is asking consumers to tag restaurants caught filling Heinz ketchup bottles with products from other brands. Called Heinz Fraud, this latest campaign plays into its long-standing brand identity. It has to be Heinz. And my honourable mention is Bud Light's marketing boss takes leave of absence following a backlash following the brand personalised use of TikTok star Dylan Mulvaney to mark her one year anniversary of publicly identifying as transgender. Now Pascal, before you explain your choices, there's just one thing I want to say about Netflix. Now, I'm annoyed with Netflix because over the last few years, they've constantly put up their fees. And I think they've been just about on the verge of taking the piss. And for a long time, I've been subscribed to the, the 4K Ultra version, which is their most expensive tier. But they actually hiked that by another two quid in November. And I just thought, sorry, you're having a laugh. So I've recently downgraded from the 4K to the normal HD. And do you know what? I really can't tell the difference. Wow. Even on, even on a 4K TV. Now, it's fascinating. And, and what we're saying in, in a way, so if I go back to my selection, uh, even though it was very, very hard, you know, you mentioned in, in the intro um, how many news items we went through this year. I wanted to find a way to capture some of the zeitgeist, shall we say, of 2023. So the first one was about AI and machine learning. And you and I have been repeating over and over again that, in general, the mainstream media have done an awful job in reporting correctly the impact of AI, the future. And I thought it was fascinating that the the view from google was more around helping with customer interaction and sales and customer service as opposed to the marketing almost like the kind of top of funnel things but we saw also that the, the real story are in health sciences they are in industry as opposed to professional services and and we've seen that to be to be true over and over again very much like you i also went for a pr disaster of sort <laughs> with with twitter and x and you and i kind of reflect on the year whereby 
you know, people had probably high expectation for the, all the wrong reason with the new owner of Twitter. And months and months later, we see no evidence that the platform is improving. We see no evidence of new feature. We see nothing apart from one after the other, the, the um, marketing team working for X having to kind of, uh, you know, go back to the media and apologize in some ways about another outburst from, from the owner. My only regret is that by the time they remove the old Twitter sign, what was left was T. <laughs> I would have paid good money for the letter T W I T to be yes. left on the side of the building. Finally, hotels.com for me and the two appoint HSBC is about the blurring of boundaries between the world of business and entertainment. We have here a brand, hotels.com, but also HSBC, trying to emulate the behavior of movies in the case of you know the TV adverts and the song, Don't You Want Me, but also emulating the behavior of, let's call them um, digital journalists that are not from you know that background using ver vertical videos. And, and I just think that that's something you and I have been mentioning f as, as early as episode one or two of two gigs, which is if you want to engage an audience, if you want to be a better storyteller, don't keep comparing yourself to the competition or to your industry. You need to look where you know, who's been engaging audiences and, and capturing uh, our imagination. It is, of course, the world of filmmaking and journalism. Yeah, I think, I mean, my choices reflect that as well. I mean, my the PR disaster I've I've um, got here the Bud Light and Dylan Mulvaney and all of that. I mean, that's a good example that you do have to be careful what you say in this world that we live in at the moment. But on the other side of the coin, you can also have a media jumps on the bandwagon and escalates something beyond your imagination. So it may well be that you're having a conversation in your boardroom and you think, Here's a message we want to put out. Yep, yeah, that's absolutely all right. And everybody signs off on it. And the next thing you know, there's a huge media storm. And it might not be that your message was wrong in the first place. It's just that there's the, the weight of or almost like false offense that people take these days mm -hmm. multiplied by a media that sometimes is complicit in, in in putting these messages out so you know from a pr point of view we do have to be extremely careful but i think that i'm coming back like you did again to the the sort of Heinz story here is again tiktok it's it's asking people to interact it's it's a bit of a, of a laugh as well, Heinz fraud, um, and that sort of thing, and and it gets people involved, and that and that's what social media is genuinely all about. And I think that going back to Twitter or X, I still can't get used to saying X. I just think they've lost their social. They've lost what it is to be a social media platform. It feels more like a cesspit of of right wing um, nutters now, unfortunately, and and I'm quite sad about that because Twitter has always been to me one of the best social media platforms, and it doesn't feel like that anymore. No, it doesn't, and and I think for me, uh, and you know, I've made a promise that we would not give you know X and Elon Musk too much airtime, shall we say, because this it just doesn't merit it. You know, the, 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 there is no contribution of any value right now to help a marketer be better at a strategy, at content, and so on. Currently, you know, we, we can only um, hope that things will improve for, for in, in the future. So, having listened to your to your summary and recap of your top three including the you know is it honorable or horrible mention of the better light <laughs> you know <laughs> backlash and you know what was interesting only yesterday because i think this must be some anniversary of sort but someone went out um you know on tiktok interviewing people in the streets about dylan um, mulvaney and and asking do you know this individual and a vast vast majority of people who were meant to know about you know this individual because it was meant to be the target audience I'm not fully aware of <laughs> who that person is. So it's a double disaster. Not only do they alienate you know, the um, the existing customer base of Burt Light, but also the very people that were meant to become interested in Burt Light have no clue who this person is. Yeah. It's crazy, isn't it? Absolutely. However, if you ask me to choose, I will have to go for the Heinz Fraud campaign for a number of reasons. Number one, it was just a perfect example of how you can – kind of spot something that is happening, a trend that is happening on social and with, you know, kind of 
Tong firmly in cheek invent a campaign around let's make you the detective and let's make you the coastal and the champion of our brand because it has to be Heinz. The, the, for me, what is interesting is that it doesn't matter pe whether people or not downloaded the, the the app and took part. It was just you know how what you can do to always be um, top of mind by doing a very very clever campaign. Yeah, yeah. So, which one should I pick of yours, Pascal? <laughs> I narrowed it down to two. It's the Hotels.com and Edgar Wright and using Don't You Want Me. And, of course, Don't You Want Me was released in the 80s. I'm a child of the 80s. It's my sort of music, so I was very, very attracted to that. But I'm going to go with the HSBC one wow. for, for two reasons, really. I just like the fact that a stuffy old bank – in the financial services industry, and I've worked a lot in the financial services industry, and believe me, it is still a stuffy industry. They just don't do creative. And they have done creative, and it's worked, and they've tapped into a modern social platform. They've tapped into a style of video. They've tapped into a vibe, and it's worked for them. And because they're a stuffy financial services company, I think it just proves to me that you can, no matter how dry your industry might be, if you do tap into the right vibes and you use the right medium, you can be successful. So I'm going for HSBC. Oh, that's wonderful. So our 2023 winners for the In The News segment are Heinz for the Call Heinz Fraud kind of campaign. And we've got HSBC with their Facebook advertising using vertical videos and POV style. Excellent. F fantastic. And once the news is done, Pascal, we always move on to Content Spotlights. Okay, Pascal, Content Spotlights. Tell me what your top three of the Content Spotlights that you spotlighted this year, what are the top three? Oh, listen, this was yeah. even worse than selecting the in the news. So on. I was almost in tears, but I've gone for a short form article, a video and the long form article. The short form article was the one page report you should always have on hand by David Finkel for Inc.com. I'll come back and give you a quick summary. The video was the art of the opening scene, how to start a movie six different ways by the team at Studio Binder. And the long form article was... How has marketing changed over the past half century? An interview with Philip Kotler and Alexander Chernev, co-authors of the sixth edition of the book Marketing Management. And, and again, I think for me, they were a good representation of, of, the, of the range and the breadth of the content, a format that we choose. We've gone from video to infographics, podcasts, and, and articles, short and long, but also what we look to, to do. So the one-page report you'd always have on hand is linked to strategy. And in the case of the the author here, David Finkel, who is the co-author of Scale, Seven Proven Principles to Grow Your Business and Get Your Life Back, he was talking about decision makers and leaders. And this could be, in fact, someone who is a solopreneur. And his um, kind of recommendation was to plan in 90-day sprints. And therefore, on that basis, to have a quarterly action plan focused on only top three priorities. And then have your team or yourselves or your suppliers and so on to report to you against those top three to begin with and only on the 90-day sprint, which you can then roll out uh, accordingly. With a video, we had fun, you and I, looking at the art of the opening scene, which was essentially how you can create video case studies, adverts indeed, in different ways, emulating some of the technique used by filmmakers. So technique one was, for example, entering enter the villain, and they use the Dark Knight as an example where we introduced to the Joker. So in business context, you know, that would be the problem or the challenge. Of course, conversely, technique number two, you have enter the heroes. We went through six different techniques, and one that was particularly interesting interesting for me was technique number five, which is to follow the genre. So why don't you do a video that actually emulate a famous film genre or music style and pay homage to that genre to essentially create something that's quite witty and can, can bring a, a someone's to smile as they realize what you've done there. And as an example, that comes to mind, a friend of the show, um, Richard Tubb, did do that with his um, video diaries where he emulated the Doctor Who 
um, kind of genre as part of the editing and the style. And finally, the long form video, how has marketing changed for the past half century, was this long but riveting um, interview that was re re reported back in in articles style of Philip Kotler and Alexander Chernev looking at you know um, marketing nowadays. And I think the best way I can summarize it to you would be to read maybe two sentences that they talk about what has changed are the tools that companies use to create value but these are just tools without the strategy cutting their use they can become a distraction from a company's core mission and finally a challenge with marketing is that in some companies it is viewed too narrowly and limited to advertising this creates a problem because marketing is a much broader discipline and we can hear from all viewers and listeners who are in a marketing a round of applause for those two statements but these are my <laughs> for this year yeah i mean don't get me started on the fact that marketing is more than just advertising and promotion that's one of the drums that i've been banging for my entire career some really good stuff there pascal and i agree how hard is it to choose the, from the content spotlights because there's been so many good ones but i did manage to narrow it down to three so the first one was a video it's a youtube video from mentor pilot and it was the title, Revolutionizing Flight, the Amazing Potential of the CFM Rise Engine. Now, if you remember, uh, this engine, this new engine that's under development is a jet engine, but it actually looks like a turboprop because what they've done is that most jet engines have these gigantic fans which are totally enclosed within the nacelle of the jet engine. But the um the the technology has got to such an advanced state now that they can create the fan and actually allow it to be effectively outside so it doesn't have to be enclosed and this has all sorts of aerodynamic and um uh properties that allow it to be very clean and 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 less polluting than the normal jet engine and mentor pilot just explains the whole concept of how a normal jet engine works and then he just segues into the talking how how this cfm rise engine works and it's just a it's a bit of a tech geek sort of um airline uh fans geek out but i just absolutely love that video it's just so informative and you can just see the passion this guy has for it. The second one is an article, and it's called Why Learning to Write Well is Still Important in the Age of AI by Jessica Stillman on Inc.com. And I just love this article. Again, it's so simple, but it's so obvious. And you mentioned earlier, Pascal, about AI. And, you know, we've been living with chat GT, GPT for the last year or so. And... I, I've, I've struggled with it a little bit to, to sort of work out how it works for me. And I think that it does a good job if you put the work in first. So I will draft a full draft of an article for a magazine or, or a publication and then ask chat GPT to refine that article. And I think it does a really good job if you do it at that level. However, if you just go to chat GPT and say, write me an article for a publication, what you tend to get back is just mediocre crap, you know, banal mediocre crap. So what you really need to do is you need to give it your human touch, your human brand uh, draft, and then allow it to just polish it and i think that that is the way forward and that reinforces what jessica's saying you still need to learn to write well in this modern world because unless you do you give stuff to ai and what you'll get back will be mediocre but if you write well in the first place it will just elevate what you've written to a higher level and the third one is and this one is just i'm so excited about this it's just so bizarre is the retracking of the nemesis roller coaster at alton towers and this there's loads of videos all over youtube about this uh, very very briefly nemesis is a roller coaster at um, alton towers it's about 30 years old very popular very intense but the track's just been worn out after after 30 odd years and the the park decided to completely retrack the ride it's a bit like triggers broom isn't it is it is it actually still really going to be nemesis because the entire ride is being retracked apart from the lift hill so 
But what they did is they decided to make this whole retracking into a theatrical performance. So on the day it closed in 2022, they brought in all these black trucks with all these men dressed in black uniforms and black helmets. And the trucks had this logo on the side called the Phalanx. And it's almost like this sort of men in black style covert operation. And they took over the site and I'll give them their due, Pascal. They have taken this act all the way through the year, even while the park was opened and they've been doing this work. All the workmen, all the work people have had the black um, suits on. All the lorries have still looked as if they belong to this covert operation. And they've had all of these um, people wandering around looking like these flank phalanx operatives all year and it's nearly ready to go they've they've retracked the whole thing it looks completely new it's black track instead of gray track they've redone the station areas but this whole phalanx thing is still going on and there are still these guards walking around with um, big lights on their their um, helmets and everything and they they are taking it to the absolute end and i imagine that when the ride finally opens in a March or April in 2024, there'll be some huge sort of conclusion to this whole theatre that has been going on for the last 18 months. And I honestly can't wait to see how the phalanx finally reveals the new version of Nemesis. Um, I just think it's uh, it's a perfect blending of marketing, theatre, and, and just fun. Thank you very much. And I think that obviously listeners will agree with me. You just talk yourself into a content spotlight for next year when <laughs> you do the reveal, because what you know, I think it's important actually to, to finish the, the storytelling and and see what they're going to do. We, we've had the before. Yeah. Wonder what the during has been like. So let, let, let's get the after if you're happy to take on that uh, that challenge. But uh, do you know what's interesting? I don't know whether that was conscious, but it seems as though you and I managed to somehow introduce um, some of our passionate, uh, uh, the passion subject that we have, you know, around transport, engineering, filmmaking, film production, storytelling, and so on. And somehow they managed to work their way into content spotlight little by little over the course of the three years. I mean, you and I have many conversations about how to improve the show, uh, creating value, having impact for our viewers and listeners. But I think in there, there has to be something that is meaningful to us. Yes, absolutely. So, Pascal, which of my three oh. are you going to choose as this week's, this year's winner? Do you know what's it's interesting? When I was reviewing via our show notes my own selection, there, there were times where I had forgotten about what we've done because we've done so many episodes. But what is fascinating, and I think there's a lesson in there, I remembered yours very vividly because mm -hmm. I think it was just the act of listening and being transported yes. via a narrative. So those three selections, I remember I, I can actually picture, take myself back in time and being sat there listening to you and the passion that came through. But I, because of the sheer cleverness and, 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 and the sheer kind of um, – transferable lessons and, and and practices i have to go for the retracting of the nemesis roller coaster <laughs> at alton towers absolutely i was sort of hoping that you were going to choose that one <laughs> <laughs> in terms of yours again it's it's difficult you know i'm attracted to the philip kotler thing because he is one of the people who understands the full breadth of the marketing discipline and i do get frustrated as you know by people and commentators these days who relegate marketing to simply being a promotional uh, task, a tactic. Um, but I think that I am going to go for the art of the opening scene because that just really, nice. that just, it just relates. I mean, you can take the lessons from that, not only for movies, but you can, you can think about, well, if I was writing an article, what would the opening be? scene the opening paragraph of the article b and i just think you can take lessons from that so i'm going to go with the art of the opening scene how to start a movie six different ways by studio ben binder wow so our top content spotlight for 2023 the art of the opening scene how to start a movie six different ways and the retracking of the nemesis roller coaster at alton towers <laughs> it's just brilliant <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, Pascal, let's move on now to This Week in History. Okay, Pascal, This Week in History, take me back in time to your top three events. 
We begin with, in 1958, the newly formed National Aeronautics and Space Administration, NASA, launches its first ever spacecraft, Pioneer 1. Originally intended to fly by the moon, it fell back to the Earth after a 43-hour flight. In 1993, the World Wide Web is born. Sir Tim Berners-Lee transferred the code for the web browser and the World Wide Web in the public domain on the 30th of April, 1993. And in 2001, Steve Jobs introduces the original iPod, featuring a 5 gigabyte hard drive, fire wire connectivity, and synchronization to iTunes with the slogan, 1,000 songs in your pocket. <laughs> Fantastic. Here are mine, Pascal, my top three historical uh, events. In 1962, shooting begins in Kingston, Jamaica for Doctor No, the first James Bond film. But in fact, it was the sixth of Ian Fleming's books. The film was released on the 5th of October 1962, and 50 years later, the world celebrated Global James Day. In 1987, Groundhog Day, featuring a rodent meteorologist, is celebrated the first time at Gobbler's Knob in Punxsutawney, Pennsylvania. And finally, in 1923, the Big Dipper, which is another roller coaster, there's a bit of a theme developing here, the Big Dipper opened at Blackpool Pleasure Beach in the UK. This wooden roller coaster was designed by a guy called John Miller and was one of the first to use upstop wheels, which stopped the trains from flying off the tracks. And that roller coaster recently celebrated its 100th anniversary. And I actually went down to the Pleasure Beach to be there on the day of the 100th anniversary. It was really fun. They had a great marketing campaign and a party to go with it so those are my top three historical events pascal which grabbed your attention i had to include groundhog day and gobbler's knob because i think we're really going to have to see if you can say gobbler's knob and keep a straight face in the christmas it, episode yes that particular historical item was the central feature of our um, blooper reel that was published um, a few a few months ago, and we had probably that one that most you know <laughs> most reaction fr from from that, and and just been really almost like a unique joke for, for, for the for the podcast. Do you know what's interesting again about this particular uh, segment? You know, this week in history, it was always designed for us to not forget that there is a reason why we are where we are today. You know, if you are curious and can do a bit of detective work, you can trace it back to an invention, a, a practice, or, and something quite daring uh, in all of them, usually were a, a first in, in some fashion and, and having to deal with the risk of failure or sometimes the actual failure, but not giving up. And, and that's why, for example, I chose the uh, Pioneer one because it took many, many attempts for, you know, for Pioneer to become a successful mission. We had the launch of the of the World Wide Web, and of course, this idea of not just the iPod, but the way in which you can now present products that you don't have to necessarily make a long list of features and and, and benefits, and just give somebody that slogan that just inspires minds really. Indeed, indeed. So, which do you think of mine? would be your winner for historical events for 2023? Oh, this is so, so difficult, but <laughs> I'm, I'm going to go for the Big Dipper for two main reasons. Number one, because in the 90s or 2000s, when I, when I you know was in the UK, I did go on the Big Dipper. And this was the most frightening experience <laughs> of my entire existence because this wooden roller coaster as you mentioned, designed you know nearly a hundred years ago, I, I was absolutely convinced I was going to die on foreign soil, and that there would be a letter going out from the Home Office to my parents saying, "We're terribly sorry, but your son was foolish enough to go on the Big Dipper and and crashed." But also, my memory of you doing the Rod Vlog special and looking at the marketing campaign. So there, there's a whole package there of memories and emotions that means that it has to be for me the winner for this year. Just as an aside to that, Pascal. <laughs> When the Big Dipper was originally designed back in 1923, and even I can remember this would have been around about 1977, 1978, the Big Dipper didn't used to have restraints. It only actually started to have the lap bars that pulled down to effectively impale you into your seat in around about the um, early 80s before that you just genuinely had to hold on <laughs> and that was it there was nothing keeping you in other than centrifugal force or whatever it is so 
just imagine what it would have been like if you'd have gone on it then it would have been even scarier so when i looked at yours i i was tempted by tim berners lee thinking about wow just what he has created for the world but in the end i've decided to go for the ipod because okay. because this is one of those fabulous marketing lessons isn't it somebody could have gone on stage steve jobs could have gone on stage and said something like we've created this new um five gigabyte hard drive with with uh, multi tensile um strength and all this jiggery pokery and all this tech geekery inside it but he didn't he stood up there and said you've got a thousand songs in your pocket and the message there is you always sell the benefits you don't sell the the um the, the technology don't tell people the size of the gigabytes there'll be tech people who want to know that but the average man on the street doesn't really care they want to know that they've got a thousand songs in their pocket they want to know that it'll get them from a to b if it's a car they don't want to know what the size of the engine is or the the liters of space in the boot they just want to know that it's a it's, it's going to get them from a to b so that's the lesson a thousand songs in your pocket wow steve job was a bit of a marketing genius really he was, even though he would claim, I would imagine he would have said, I'm not a trained marketer, but I understand mm -hmm. people. I understand this idea of inviting, stimulating the theater of the mind. Yes. Uh, I mean, for me, you know, one of the lessons that I learned quite early on, thanks to one of my mentors, was this idea of, if you can if you can start the sentence with imagine dot dot mm. dot so imagine a thousand songs in your pocket imagine going on this roller coaster and that kind of things um so thank you for fine fine selections so our winners for you know this week in history we've got steve job 2001 the thousand songs in your pocket and the big dipper blackpool Ple pleasure beach in 1923 fantastic okay pascal let's bring ourselves up to date the next section that we're going to talk about is marketing tech and apps. Okay, Pascal, marketing tech and apps. Now, again, we have an absolute bucket full, a shed load of marketing tech and apps we could have picked from this year. How on earth did you manage to narrow it down to four? Oh, listen, th this was ag <laughs> agony. I mean, it was hard enough content spotlights. I mean, the, the, in the news, there was so much, you know, you could almost go, go through it. The, this week in the history was tough, but this was very, very difficult. However, um, I've run, <laughs> rose to the challenge and I've got my top three. First, this whole business of live streaming. Everybody's got their favorite platforms, but I have to say, Ecamm Live, which is a live streaming platform for Mac users, did two things. Not only did they release uh, version 4.0 with great, great amount of features to create almost a TV-like experience for your attendees, whether you're going live on social media and more. But what I liked about it was they created a sense of event around the release of the version. Because all too often, back to what we were saying with uh, Steve Jobs and more, people release new versions, you get a very blunt message saying, well, you have to update to new versions or else. And off you go. And and and, and a bit like what you mentioned with the um, Alton Towers and Nemesis, you know, this is inconvenient because you have to download and check and there's going to be bugs. There's going to be all sort of issues. But if you can, you know, wrap it around a sense of event to say that this is special and we're going to support you, then to me that, that was great. And they, they had a five-day challenge, which was very clever because the five-day challenge allowed you to, to use all the new features and win prizes. And they had also a very, very well thought out bank of resources. So Ecamm Live 4.0, section number one. Number two, back to usefulness and this idea of connecting with customer needs and wants. HubSpot have, uh, did release in the year their revised customer avatar templates to give you a great head start in thinking about your customers in different ways, planning your content and so on. And what I liked about it, it was a very simple download. There was none of that, you know, giving half of your life's information away and very very supportive actually very well designed what i liked about it you could choose different formats it could be a document it could be a powerpoint it could be a different ways and finally we did cover a lot of ai tools but this one um did surprise me so perplexity.ai 
it, you, one could say it looks like a clone of Ch Chat GPT, but then that's a bit of an unfair comparison. It's been like saying well, everything is like Google if you release a new search engine. But actually, I did like the interface. It was more elegant. It was looked more professional to me. And it was all already guiding you in the sense of this is to assist you. It will not give you the answers. It will not write the article for you. So the, the example that I gave at the time of selecting perplexity.ai was to use it to give you the structure of an article you might compile based on the brief or to plan maybe the question you should be asking of, an, of a guest for your next podcast and so on. So perplexity.ai, the customer avatar from HubSpot and Ecamm Live 4.0 are my top three for this year. Oh, Pascal, I really struggled with this, as you would expect. <laughs> so in the end, I sort of narrowed it down to things that have helped me with my vlog creation, my video creation. And, and that was just almost like a cheat's way of, of uh, narrowing it down because it meant I messed out some incredible stuff. But what I've gone for is the first one is Beat Edit, which detects the beats in the music and generates markers for them in Premiere Pro. Now it sounds really bit, really sort of basic that, but it's so good. I love editing my videos to the beats of the music. Um, and as you know, most, most music has eight beats to the bar. So you might have one clip for eight beats and then it changes on the ninth beat and, and so on and so on. And beat edit makes it so much easier because previously you had to effectively look at the waveform and try to work out where the beats were in the waveform and almost like listen to it and tap as you're going through the music to create markers and, and it was never accurate because you would always tap too soon or too late whereas beat edit gets it absolutely bang on now since we talked about beat edit actually on the show earlier in the year they've released an update which now means that the markers are colored and each of the eight beats has a different color. So for example, beat number one might be a red marker, which means that beat number nine will be red, etc. And that makes it even easier still. So I love beat edit. The second one, as you probably are not surprised by at all, is the DJI Osmo Pocket 3 camera, which, um, not, let, let's face it, I've ra ra raved about <laughs> the DJ, DJI Osmo Pocket 2, which now belongs to you, of course, um, for, for the last couple of years. It is a phenomenal piece of kit, but the Osmo 3 takes it to a in, in, in an amazing new level, its low light capacity for filming in low light is just astonishing. I and mean, I've been to the Christmas market in Edinburgh in, in night. I've been to a couple of light trails at the Botanical Gardens and elsewhere. And honestly, the the quality of the picture is just incredible. There's hardly any noise in the picture at all. So D, DJI are really, really doing wonderful things when it comes to video technology. And finally, it's another um, Adobe, uh, Adobe thing here is called Firefly. This is their AI, which you can use to edit photographs. Now, it's a little bit ropey if you want it to edit a proper photograph, for example, of yourself or something like that. But what I find it's really useful for is if you want to cover up something in a in a shot that has become you know if you if you have a you do a film you're out and about and you accidentally forget there's a waste bin behind you or that there's a bin with rubbish spilling out of it you could actually take a shot a, a, a single shot of that scene and then use the adobe firefly to effectively edit out the bin and because you've overlaid it in your shot nobody would know the difference. And it's really made something like that so much easier. I mean, before you'd have to mask it out, you'd have to do all sorts of different tricks and, and it would take you absolutely ages. Whereas this, wow, it just replaces it so easily. So those are my top three marketing tech and apps, all video related. And I'd be very interested to see, Pascal, which one you think deserves top, uh, top spot. Yeah, and actually, uh, I've just realized there was something I wanted to mention during the content spotlights. It was almost like a honorable mention again. <laughs> the the fun we had in surprising you with the inclusion of your Rod Vlog video production kind of workflow yes. in one of the episodes. That, yes. that was just uh, just wonderful. But listening to you, uh, I mean, 
goodness, they are all so incredibly useful. Um, you and I have actually played a lot with the AI. For all, we're going to be very frank about you know how much they can waste time and effort and actually can be responsible for descaling people as opposed to upscaling. Uh, I do like the generative AI when it comes to uh, media content. In fact, um, one thing we do with Roger, we keep sending things to each other, say, look, I play with this, what do you think? And while, while she went in London, I sent you a, a, a AI photo of you running away from a dragon, if That's you remember, right. yeah. created from the from the prompt on on many platform. But having seen the results, uh, and in, in particular, actually, with regard to the DJI Osmo Pocket Three, this is the result not only in terms of the the colors, but the blacks. That to me is where you can see when the camera is performing well. Because when you went, and I most recommend people to watch, you know, the, the two videos you've done recently, or three now, when you've been out at night with uh, different light shows and and more, it's also the blacks that are telltale sign that the camera is struggling, let alone the light. So my selection has to be the DJI Osmo Pocket Three. Ah, uh, I was I was expecting that. <laughs> And from your point of view, Pascal, again, you know, Ecamm Live, great tech. I'm attracted to that because it's video, but I'm actually going to go for your perplexity thing. Mm. And again, you did say it's a bit like chat G GPT, but they've, they've sort of elevated it, haven't they? And the interface is lovely. And let's face it, you know, it sort of it sort of allies to my con one of my content spotlights earlier. You still have to learn how to structure an article or structure a presentation or whatever it is. You can't just allow AI to um, do it all for you. And I think that this can not only help you write, but it can also help you with that structure as well. So I'm going with perplexity. Wow, that's. Fascinating. Thank you very much. So our top marketing tech and apps from Jimmy 3, perplexity.ai, your digital assistant, and the DJI Osmo Pocket 3 camera. Fantastic. Well, Pascal, we're nearly at the end, but we've got probably the most important part of the show to go. <laughs> and I expect this will probably be the hardest part of the show to do as well. We are going to move on now and talk about our top three film marketing campaigns. Well, Pascal, film marketing. Now, before we dive into the selections of the films that we've re reviewed over the course of the year, I think you wanted to pick up on one of your highlights of the year. Oh, my goodness. You know, episode 100, TG100, as we you know call it with affection, with your sister, Kate Edwards. I mean, we try and land, you know, on number 50, was with Mike Leader, film producer in Hong Kong. Kate is based in Los Angeles, so every 50s, you know, we try and do something <laughs> very, very special. But that conversation was just absolutely wonderful. I think there was something very poignant for me to see the two of you together, albeit virtually. But also for, for Kate to be so generous with her time and, and storytelling around her work, with you know some of the superstars that you and I absolutely adore, you know on on the big screen and now sm small screens, and 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 the way we were you know we, you and I were getting a bit closer to understanding what goes on really when it comes to film production and marketing, and and it was just wonderful. Yeah, it was it was good to um, to get together with Kate. And, I mean, I've heard quite a lot of the stories that she told us. I have heard them before, but. She's got a way of telling a story um, and she's got really quite nice and soothing voice. And it's always nice just to hear those stories come alive again. And uh, interestingly enough, and completely out of the blue, a few weeks after we recorded that episode, she made a surprise visit to the UK. That's right, yes. Um, one of her clients actually invited her and her husband to come to Scotland um, with them on a holiday. And so literally only had about three days notice that she was going to arrive. And uh, there she was in Edinburgh, which was, uh, she hasn't been over to Edinburgh for a very long time. So that was absolutely absolutely fantastic so pascal we have reviewed as you said 17 films this year 17 films and 17 marketing campaigns and obviously you choose one week i choose the next week mm -hmm. and i know this is going to be extremely difficult so maybe just remind us of the films that you chose this year and then i'll remind you of the films that i chose okay so my selection included dry the 
2011 version with Ryan Gosling, Waterworld, Dungeons and Dragons, Honor Among Thieves, Tremors, No Way Out, chosen by Kate Edwards, Oppenheimer, Pitch Black, Jurassic Park, we celebrated the 30th anniversary, and Killers of the Flower Moon. Yeah, so I was looking at Mission Impossible, Dead Reckoning Part 1, uh, The Banshees of Inishirin. What an incredibly different sort of movie that was. Uh, actually, The Menu was a very different sort of movie as well. Operation Fortune, Ruse de Guerre. That was uh, <laughs> that was uh, a Jason Statham movie. Very interesting film. That Casino Royale, the first of the Daniel Craig Bond films. Heat, going back to nineteen ninety five. Gladiator. Wow, what a film Gladiator is, and probably one of the earliest films we've ever talked about. Paths right. of Glory, which was originally released in nineteen fifty seven. So, Pascal, how on earth do we choose the top three here? I have no idea. <laughs> like, <laughs> as you were reading your list, I was already fretting about having to select, <laughs> select you know, my, my, my top three. So I, I suppose I'm going to go then to the way which I selected Content Spiller, which is my memory, the level of enjoyment of going through them, uh, although I'm realizing right now it's, it's going to fail me because you know all of them are good. But I'm going to go for... Dungeons and Dragons on Amongst the because actually this is so you know this is such a good exemplar of how you and I produce two gigs of Martin podcasts bringing the 80s bringing storytelling uh, gaming uh, everything but also um, we, we had fun albeit at the time I was still living in France and in the UK where we went respectively to the, to the local premieres in support of Medicinema the charity that essentially helps young people and adults go to the cinema whilst recovering from their illnesses so number one Dungeons and Dragons because of the memory uh, oh my god yeah. uh, I think No Way Out because it was just a wonderful to reminisce and be complete fun boys with Will Patton's performance and so on and then I will have to go because we discovered so many surprises Jurassic Park 30th anniversary we went back to 1993 and discovered some wonderful gems about more traditional ways of marketing the film so Dungeons and Dragons No Way Out and Jurassic Park but this is just heartbreaking because all the others are wonderful <laughs> I mean it is hard and, and sometimes when you think well can we really objectively re rank a marketing campaign that's 30 years old? But as you say there, you know, we discovered so much when we went back and looked at Jurassic Park. And, you know, looking back at Gladiator and what they did with um, the website yeah. back there, early days of, of the internet, it, it was good. But I always get, I always get attracted by films which have ensemble casts and the publicity and the marketing for the film does something with that ensemble cast whether it's individual character posters or or cards or social media posts and i think they did that fantastically with operation fortune mm -hmm. ruse de guerre you've got jason statham um aubrey plaza and her character had their own posters all the other um um characters had their own posters and i i, I just thought that was lovely the Banshees of Inner Shirin, I don't particularly think that the marketing campaign stood out for me, but I think combined with the fact that it was such a unique film, never really seen any film like it before, didn't expect to enjoy it at all, but thought came away thinking it was one of the best films I'd seen of the year. And I do think 2023 has been a bit of a lean year in terms of new films, I have to say, I haven't really been excited by many films this year. So Banshees definitely gets it. And I struggled because I wanted to think, I wanted Gladiator to be there and I wanted Casino Royale, but again, I've come down for something a little bit different. The menu again was quite character driven. Ray Fiennes was in it, it was great. And um, I just loved the way that they focused in on the characters again so we've got operation fortune we've got the menu and we've got the banshees of inishirin so pascal which oh. of those three do you think should be my top one? Oh, my <laughs> world this is hard beyond measure because 
uh, the memory of of the, the 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 components of the campaigns are coming back to me now. Uh, Banshees. I mean, we, we, I think it's probably one of our longest film marketing reviews for all. It was a targeted, uh, you know, campaign. It wasn't particularly complex, but I have to go with the menu because the execution on social media uh, of some of the posts and the the play on words mm. uh, that they used and the, the tonality, um, everything. And actually, there were some really clever games being played between the different actors in terms of who was looking to the lens, who wasn't looking to the lens, who were these, the calligraphy. Um, everything meant to me that you either started the experience watching the film before, if you had consumed that online content and beyond, or you've seen the film, you go online and it extends that experience. So uh, I will have to go it, it, with heavy heart because all the others are so good with the menu. Fantastic. Can you guess which one I'm going to go for out of yours? Uh, no, actually, I can't. Dungeons and Dragons, No Way Out, mm. Jurassic Park. <laughs> no, I, I, I wouldn't want to be in your in your shoes. Actually, Pascal, it's an absolute an absolute uh, no brainer for me. It's Dungeons and Dragons all right. the way. I actually wanted that to be in my list, so I could have picked it as one of my top three. I, I just, again, for me, it was just a perfect marketing campaign. It was fun. It was viral. They used the characters. So there was character posters. There was character tweets and, and, and social media. It was a fabulous movie. You also gifted Trisha and I a special ticket to go and see it, although we did have a, a last-minute panic yes. when we went to the wrong theater. And we had we had literally had 15 minutes to drive further into Edinburgh than we thought we were going to have to go. But we got there in the end. It was fantastic. Very enjoyable film. Haven't laughed out loud at a film for a long time, and I did. So just the combination of the film and the marketing campaign, it was so colourful, so fun, so bright. It's got to be Dungeons & Dragons. So there you go. <laughs> yeah, another story that we can add. Thank you. That's that's a great selection. Another story that we can add, because you travelled extensively with work, the day you left London after your conference was the day of the premiere in London, if you recall, and some lucky winners could play D and D in the Tower of London, uh, and they had the surprise visit from the cast. and And the campaign went on and on. Uh, it, it was just again um, seizing the moment and and making it last beyond just that you know two and a half hours at the cinema. Yeah. Wow. Well, that was a trip down memory lane, Pascal. For quite a bit. Twenty twenty three. All those things that we've talked about. All those apps all that tech those content spotlights and those fabulous films we really have covered a lot of ground and you know we're really grateful that everybody out there who listens to the show and watches the show we really we really do appreciate you tuning in and we'd love to know what you think your top marketing tech and app is this year what your top content spotlight is what your top film marketing selection has been let us know put a comment on the youtube channel hit us up on x or twitter or whatever elon's calling it today and just let us know we are going to be back in the new year in 2024 with a whole new episode a whole new selection and we'll just start the process again and there's some exciting stuff coming up, I think, Pascal. Yeah, well, we'll begin with our 2024 predictions, as we did um, last year. And we will be including some you know, now shout-outs and, and, and uh, including, uh, in particular, what we think the focus should be for your marketing campaign so that they are better and faster. Indeed. So have a great Christmas. Have a fantastic New Year. We will see you next year in 2024 until then go out there and make sure that your marketing is done right i was roger edwards and he was pascal fintoni <laughs> <laughs>